What's going on, world? This is your girl, Marky Lemon Drow. And you know what? Today is a unique day. My guest has already put a smile on my face. Actually, she got me over here wanting to have church today on you guys um, because she, one, we're both graduates. Actually, I'm a graduate of the Landmark Forum. And tell me what you're a graduate of. I'm a, absolutely. I am a graduate of the Forum as well. And in addition to the Forum, I completed the entire curriculum for living for Landmark, Landmark Worldwide. Excellent. And let me tell you this, that is very time consuming. So I want to introduce you to Jackie Jackson. Um, she is pretty much all things real estate, but quite unique, right? Um, because you're a real estate investor and you got me straight before I call. You let me know. And I am not licensed. I work on behalf of real estate investors. And I can imagine uh, at the time of this recording, a lot of people are quarantined. Um, the question, uh, the, the country doesn't really know which direction to go in. How are you doing with your investments today? And what do you see happening over the next couple of months? Oh, that's such a great question. So yes, I'm always going to start the conversation as an unlicensed real estate professional, because there is a difference, right? So as a licensed professional, your state law say you have a fiduciary responsibility to protect whoever it is that you represent in the transaction. So Ms. Jackson represents Ms. Jackson <laughs> in every transaction. <laughs> so, you know, my fiduciary responsibilities to me, I operate as a principal in the transaction. So I'm in the contract either as the seller selling my own property for sale by owner, or I'm the buyer, you know, buying a property and negotiating on behalf of myself directly directly with that property owner, right? So there is a difference. Now, what am I doing right now? How is the environment in investing here in Orlando, Florida? Actually, it's great. I mean, just last week, um, we, when we had our first introduction to social distancing and uh, people were kind of leery of going out and then there were talks about having that shut down and no one, you know, coming out and being with each other, I was still signing deals. <laughs> like, I really was. I was still signing deals, still signing contracts. As a matter of fact, I have an inspection tomorrow that's coming out to one of my properties. So to, to be honest with you, it's not necessarily, I would say, business as usual, but it does go on in consideration and in spite of the fear and the pandemic and everything that is going on. And you really have to believe that all is well. You have to claim that and continue your business because this is how you feed your family. You can't let the media and the news like um, deter you from how you support your life and support your family. You really got to do what you got to do. So one of the ways that I have been able to successfully market properties in these times is I do the virtual tours. I do uh, lives on Facebook or lives on YouTube where I'm standing inside a property, walking room to room, and demonstrating the features and the benefits of what this property has to offer, right? So that engages with the audience and I'm able to answer questions real time. So that is a way to actually get people to come in the doors without physically being able to come in the doors, right? So of course, you know, you still have your virtual tours, like the real, the way that the realtors do it, like on the MLS. <laughs> and then you still have pictures, but there's nothing like being present <clears throat> on the scene, kind of like a news reporter, like, hey, I'm here. <laughs> Let's take a look at this together and see what we could find out, you know? I'm opening doors and closing closets and opening, you know, things, opening refrigerators and people get to be like in that experience with you. Wow. Now, a couple of things come to mind. I know back in September of 2016, I did a Facebook Live video on how to do a mock Facebook Live video. And what's funny is people have now gone and pulled that video to tell other realtors how to do it now, right? So we both, two things we have in common, <clears throat> being graduates of the Landmark Forum means that we think differently, right? Um, we're always thinking about the possibilities and creation. It's just, it, it comes with the form, right? We're problem solvers, concentrate on the solution, not on the problem. Um, and we both realize we've been through some things probably in the past that we were victorious over those. We shall be victorious again. When I think about that live stream and video, 
I always tell people, if you've never met a person, you have a one in 50 chance of converting that person, right? To come and do business with you. However, if you meet a person, you go to a one in six chance. When we start thinking about video, more importantly, live streaming video, people feel as if they already know you. They understand uh, the tone of your voice, your mannerisms. Uh, if you do your videos to the public, they can actually hop in and start communicating with you, asking you real questions, right? Sliding into the DM. And so what encouraged you to embrace live streaming video? Because here, here's what's kind of sad about this, right? The fact that you understood the difference between fiduciary and non-fiduciary when most realtors don't understand it blew my freaking mind out the gate. Let me just let you know that right now. And the fact that you understand your undivided loyalty is to self and not to the client. So let me just go and give you kudos for that because I can tell you right now they don't know. And the next thing is, if all investors think like you, they don't need us because we have a fear of doing video. I'm going to just say that again for my listeners, right? Mm. If investors are doing their own live streaming video, the likelihood is people are getting to know them and they can have all the buyers and sellers lined up. That means essentially they don't need the scared realtor who won't do live streaming or any video for that matter. And mm. that's, a, that, now let me tell you something, that's a tough bullet to bite. Yeah, that right. one was not very tasty. But, <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, we, we, we got to have a real conversation, right? Um, we do. And, and what I'm always encouraging realtors, all 1.4 million of them, is to do video, to be consistent in doing video. And it doesn't have to be a glamorous video because a glamorous video doesn't mean you generated any leads or connected with anyone. It's just a pretty looking video. And so if we were to go back, because look, you just, you're barking in its own fleek, right? I, and, I, and I already know if you're doing this consistently, people are connecting directly to you. Mm -hmm. So I have a question. How often do you, ha do you, do you use a realtor on your transactions? And, and do you? That would my <laughs> You know what I do? I mean, I, most of my, okay, so here we go. <laughs> All right, let's clear the air, you know, because I want to make sure that anyone who's listening, your followers, Marky, all of your the licensed, all the 1.4, you know, licensed professionals out there across the across the country, that they understand that we, we just have different roles, but we love you. We absolutely adore and love you, okay? So we have different roles, and that's okay because we can coexist together, okay? Now, where there is some, where there's some overlap is when um, real estate investors are marketing to, like, traditional sales. And we do that all the time. But, hey, in the marketplace, even in the natural elements of the world, it's survival of the fittest. So in this ever-changing environment, what does that look like for human beings in a professional environment? It means that we must, we must evolve ourselves. We must be able to allow ourselves to be authentic in a way and present our services where we connect with other human beings because the house itself is, is a commodity. There's a human being behind that property. And when I say house, it's just an easier term for me to say. I mean, I could have said gas station. I could have said strip mall. I really could have said commercial land or you know anything like that. It doesn't matter what the pro property's usage is, but there's a human being behind it. And you may say, okay, Jackie, but you know, this property's owned by an entity or this property's owned by trust. Well, guess what? Somebody owned that entity <laughs> and somebody owns that trust. Okay. So there's always going to be a human being behind that. So where I feel that some people fall short in their businesses is that they forget that it's a human to human industry. We're in a people business, people. All right. So long, are, long gone are the days where people were like, where people say, well, I'm in business to business or business to customer or I don't know, customer. Listen, all that jargon is out the window. We're in a human 
to human, an H to H <laughs> environment. And you have to find a way to connect to humans and really speak to what they're going through and connect with them so that you can build that rapport and that trust and that value contribution. So they follow you wherever you go. And investors, we figured that out. That's all that is. Like, we were like, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> we got different rules. <laughs> you got different rules, Better. right? And you're clear about the rules. But here's what you have to sell that property. That, mm -hmm. that I mean, your number one goal, if not, then that is going to be a problem within the house, right? It's going to disrupt the finances. And so you're like, hey, my property has to sell. And I'll use you, but my property has to sell with or without you because my job is to get this done. And I'm telling you right now, I'm gonna have to use the H2H, the, the <laughs> human to human, uh, because traditionally we come out of a world of B2C, business to consumer, B2B, business to business. But this is human to human. Um, my husband is a confirmed case of the coronavirus. And so for days he laid in the bed, he didn't do anything. And I said, Steven, we have to do a Facebook live video to let the world know that you have the coronavirus. And my husband was like, no, nah, why we have to do that? I said, because you're not a traditional case. I said, um, you're not having any problems, essentially. You had, uh, he had no sense of smell, no sense of taste and diarrhea. Mm. And I wanted the world to know, because at the same time I had a friend who was hospitalized, another one sent to the hospital with 103 temperature, another one who actually passed away the day that we did the video. Mm. I needed people to see the A to Z of this yeah. virus. And every day since he's done the video, people are calling him. They are like, oh, you did a good video. I think it's probably the most comments I've ever received on a Facebook. I think it's like 400 comments on this thing, right? You don't get that many comments unless it's your birthday. Um, and so I said, Stephen, you really, you've done a really good job. But people already felt as if they knew him as my, as Marky's husband. Now they feel like they know Stephen. Yeah, yeah. That's actually a really, really good um, analogy. And I'm so happy that your husband is doing well. All right, so I just want to make that, <laughs> I don't want to step over that. <laughs> so um, just like your, your husband's um, dynamic way of introducing himself and talking about um, his, um, experience with COVID-19, that way of delivery, that, that dynamic, unique way, that's exactly what all professionals should be considering in their own lives right now. What is a method? And then decide what platform, because you could choose anything you want. You know, the, the, the world wide web is available for all of us, right? So you have a plethora of platforms that you can choose from. But where the where you make your money is your authentic ability to be dynamic in your market space and actually create your own blue ocean. So here's the here's the challenge. People normally believe that there's not enough. You know, they have an outlook of scarcity and they have an outlook of lack and they have an outlook of why there's just not enough for us all. But the truth is the earth replenishes itself no matter what. It doesn't need humans to do what the what you know humans we don't have any contribution to the the photosynthetic process, right? The photosynthesis, right? I don't even remember that's like fifth grade like science or something. But I'm just saying, we don't have any contribution to that. That happens with or without us. <laughs> right. So what I'm the point that I'm trying to make here is is that we must evolve with the times and be as dynamic as the universe that's evolving around us if we want to stay relevant. And then this particular market, your relevancy is where you meet people on a human to human basis. So I'm going to give you a perfect example, a perfect example of what this means. Okay. So as a real estate investor, I speak to people regarding their personal situation. If the property comes up, Great. We'll talk about the property. But I'm when I'm on the phone or I'm having a conversation with another person who I'm potentially getting ready to make an offer to, the property is secondary. I'm really trying to understand 
what they're going through and then relate my solution to helping them fix their personal challenge. So whether they just got divorced, whether they just got a bankruptcy, whether they have a family member that's sick in another state and they have to all of a sudden relocate when they thought they never would have to relocate, whether they are trying to downsize and they want to be able to explore the world. They've always always dreamt of traveling across the world and, and backpacking it or something like that and they have a property that's holding them back and 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 like um like prohibiting them from experiencing that best life that they envision themselves having i speak to that thing right so i paint that picture for them like hmm well what would it be like for you if you had this experience right now in real time what would that what would that feeling evoke in your life? What would that change be? And then of course they light up because that's really what they want. They want someone to listen to them regarding what their desires and their hopes and dreams are, right? And then I says, okay, how I can help you realize this potential situation in your life that you're trying to create, whatever it is, is with this cash offer or is with this creative financing opportunity that I can share with you. And they're like, oh, well, that totally makes sense because it's not necessarily the offer. It's the fact that I address what they were going through. And I believe that licensed professionals for them, they feel a little bit intimidated. And this is only my, you know, my opinion. I think that they feel intimidated or they're like, oh, I don't want to talk about that. That's private. Well, guess what? My bank account needs me to talk about this. (laughs) (laughs) Real. Education needs me to talk about this. Like my retirement, my 401k, my self directed IRA, my stocks and my bonds need me to talk about this. So I'm going to take it there. Every single opportunity I get, I am going to take it there with another human being. But what that takes is courage, Marcy. You got to be okay with self first. Because if you're having these challenges in your own life, then sometimes it's going to occur to you that it may be offensive to have those conversations with a stranger, you know? But you can have those conversations in the virtual setting in your live or face-to-face, if that's the case, if you're having a sit-down consultation. And I promise you, you will be unique and dynamic and you will get the deal. You'll get the listing, right? If that's your intent. You will get the listing because you're new client will say to you, wow, no one's ever asked me that question. No one's ever cared. All they ever cared about was having me sign on this line, on this contractual agreement for me to get six and 7% to sell my property. But you never asked me, what do I plan on doing with this money? Why in the world are you selling your house in this market? I ask every seller that question. Are you crazy? And I, I mean, as a matter of fact, I even say it like they crazy. I'm like, why are you selling your property in this market? Like my voice goes, like my pitch go up in this market. They, they second guessing themselves. They like, well, I don't know. You know, like something came up and, uh, and I just got to sell. And I'll be like, what came up? You know, now I'm quick. I'm inquisitive. What came up? <laughs> what changed? <laughs> you know, and that makes it human. There are two things. Um, when I was an investor, what I would do, because I'm licensed, every time I would go to see someone, I actually came not as an agent, but I gave them a non-agent, uh, a, basically a statement in the state of Illinois of ministerial acts, <clears throat> letting them know that I was not acting on their behalf, that I was there on my own personal, <laughs> like this is going to benefit me. And I would tell them how much I was going to buy their house for. I'm going to buy your house for this. I'm going to renovate your house. I'm going to put your house on the market for this. And this is how much money I plan to make. And if I don't make this profit, then this will not be a good deal for me. I said, or I am licensed. And I will list your house and I will sell it for you. And these are the numbers. Every last one of those people, I actually sold all of their houses. Because what they told me was every investor who came to them never explained the numbers of how much money they was going to make off of them. Mm-hmm. And honestly, I didn't care if I sold the house or I bought the house. <laughs> like <laughs> if either one was perfectly okay with me. But it's how I was in the top 10% of realtors in the city of Chicago. And I sent out this ugly generic postcard, which people absolutely love. They didn't like the cute glossy one with me on it. They like this ugly generic one. But there wasn't a person whose front door I graced. 
that I didn't get that listing because we had a discussion about, as an investor, how I was going to make money off of them. And they were like, mm -hmm. you know what? I appreciate your honesty. I want you to list my house. Well, girl, <laughs> that's the thing. They were signing a contract either way. So good. I was you not leaving their house empty. And I believe in options. I do not like people to sell me for nothing. Give me my options. Take a take a step back. <laughs> Let me think about the impact to me, and I'll get back to you. And most people who present me with an option, I end up doing business with them because I appreciate the fact that they gave me an option and allowed me to make a choice for myself. And it was mm. one other thing that resonated with me. Oh, I just lost my thought. Because it was so, because look, it's so good. I, <laughs> you got my head around here dancing. But yeah, I, re I remember vividly every last person. And here's the beauty. You can do things that as an agent we can't do or we don't know how to present it. Mm -hmm. Right. To me, I understood the fiduciary responsibility, so I know what I can't do. But how do I get it done and follow the rules and regulations? Oh, I need to let you know I'm not your agent coming in this door and that you need to sign this sheet of paper saying I don't represent you. Yeah. And then we can decide if I will represent you, but I got two contracts. And <laughs> one of one other way, other way, I need to do business with you today. Um, right. Wow. And you and you came prepared, right? You oh, you yes. went on all of your appointments prepared to deliver what was in the best interest for that particular property owner based on their situation. And like you, when I make offers, I don't do one offer. I make th three offers every single time I have a conversation. Three in the, like A, B and C. We're going to select one of these. So A, B, and C is what I, what I offer, you know, and, and I, and I share with the, the property owner, I say, you know, these offers are very similar to like when you were, you know, back in grade school, you know, Mr. Owner. And do you remember when you did well, your, your teacher would give you an A and you would be so excited and so happy. And you'd be like, you know, kind of pat yourself on the back. And if you didn't do so well and there was some room for improvement, maybe you got something on, on the lines of maybe a D or an F, but it would just be a conversation of what you can do next time to make it better. And I said, well, that's kind of like how my offers are. All right. So I'm going to share with you all the different ways that I can successfully purchase your property that fits my business criteria as well as satisfies and supports you in doing X in your life. I ain't talking about the house in doing X in your life. And if any one of these offers resonates with you, I would love for you to share with me what grade you'd give it. Is it an A, a B, a C, a D, or oh my goodness, Jackie, this is a total F. <laughs> and then in the event that you give me an F or a D or a C, I will not be offended. All I ask is that you share with me, please share with me why, or what about, did you like? What about the offer did you like? And what part about the offer did you not like? And then now it's a dialogue. Because remember, it's human to human. It's not necessarily take it or leave it. It's human to human at all times. You know what? <laughs> I've been in real estate now for 21 years. And this is the first time that I just realized as a profession, I know what I was doing as an investor we should present offers. And let me tell you, on the buy side, representing a buyer client, because a lot of them don't want to sign an exclusive buyer representation agreement, and we can do those in the state of Illinois. I provide them, and I couldn't think of the, the term of the form I was talking about, uh, ministerial acts, notice of no agency might be some of the language they hear across the country. So when buyers would come to me, I would give them their options you don't have to sign anything at all. And that means we don't have any type of relationship, right? You can sign ministerial acts and you understand that I'm not acting on your behalf and my work for you is clerical in nature. Or you can sign this exclusive right to represent agreement and I owe you those fiduciary responsibilities, an old car, obedience as long as it's in the scope of the law, undivided loyalty, putting your needs and wants before my own. Full disclosure, not old disclosure regardless to whether <laughs> I'm working with you or not. Um, for car, confidentiality, accountability, reasonable skills, and care. 
And so I'm thinking from the listing side, just as I was presenting those options to define our buyer relationship, that we shouldn't just go in with, with one contract, right? We should have multiple contracts. Yeah. And what each of those means, because now as an agent, instead of them shopping you, right, agent to agent, which is what they're doing with us, I've given them three options and I've done something no other agent has done. Unique, the unique and selling proposition. Mm. Unique and dynamic. And the reason why you would ultimately provide all of those options <laughs> is because you are certain in your own research that you are authentic in your delivery to support and your intent is to support another human being while they make a transition in this particular moment in time in their lives. It's not about the house not about the commission. I understand that we all have to be compensated. I don't work for free. I don't expect anybody else to work for free. But your compensation and your earning power is in direct correlation and relationship to the service that you provide, like your, your sharing and your ability to care for another human being. That's why we all ran out and bought toilet tissue because it was so important to us because it cared for our bodies, right? So that was something that we went out and we bought. So my point here is be toilet tissue. <laughs> be right. the thing that everybody needs. <laughs> be the toilet tissue. I like, you know, I like that. I'm, I might need to go do a meme on be the toilet tissue, right? Now, you know what? It came back to me, but I lost my thought process on it. And you said, why? Why would you sell your house in this market? What's yeah. funny, we purchased our house. It was an REO. We did a 203K loan uh, 10 years ago. Our house right now, we owe probably a little less than a third of its market value. Mm -hmm. We cannot afford to sell our house because I am not buying the $700,000 house across the street when I owe one ninety five dollars on the house across the street. And I still have another child to send to college. And so my husband and I, we looked at the numbers, right? If, yeah, we would walk away with equity, but then we would be throwing it, right, towards the new mortgage payment on the house that costs, you know, that's three times more than what we owe. And so I look at myself and my friends. Most of us can't afford to move if we bought in the same community, especially in the inner city, because the price values have gone up so much. It's sort of like, well, you need some space, you better throw an addition on it. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. and, and guess what? <laughs> As parents of adult age children, I don't need more space. I need them to get uncomfortable with the little bit of space I'm letting them stay in right now. <laughs> I need to squeeze them on out. I don't need more space. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Like, why would you, you sell now, but you're listening and you're giving them options? When we think about the, the live video, um, because you said you, you utilize it all the time. And I know that we said that you're on Facebook, you're on YouTube, you're on Instagram. Which one of those platforms is your favorite? I like Facebook. Um, I mean, I do rank them in the order of my engagement, right? Oh. So, <laughs> so, I mean, that's pretty much how I do it. So you, you can spread yourself thin, you know, trying to be everywhere all the time. So eventually you would need like automation to make it seem like you're everywhere all the time, but you know, you're not right. So there's, um, there's definitely services that can make you look like you're everywhere all the time that can basically spread your um, credibility across the web. So I'm actually like on all pr platforms, you know, from LinkedIn to YouTube to Vimeo to this to that. Like I'm on everything. If you Google, you'll, you'll find it. But my, the reason why I like Facebook is because um, that's where people tend to share more personally and it's accepted that that is the way how you communicate there. And people are talking about families. They're talking about like intimate challenges in their life. And they feel safe doing that. On, for example, on LinkedIn, you know, that people don't do it that way. And it's the same people. <laughs> so if you cross reference, it's the same people. But the behavior and the way how they communicate on that platform is much, much different. I like LinkedIn because I, I like to say that it's like our professional pretentiousness. Like we're all doing well, but really not. But <laughs> on LinkedIn with your professional profile, right? And every now and then you get somebody that takes a selfie and then someone be like, so indignant and be like, you can't do that here. You were like, but 
I just posted this on Facebook. You know, it's the same person. It's me, you know, but on LinkedIn, that's just like so unheard of, you know? So you got to meet people where they're at and then maximize the platform that you're on based on its usage and how people use it. So I like Facebook because of the open and engagement. I like um, Instagram because it's fast paced. You could just literally point the phone to your face and be like, hey guys, what's up? You know, it's like really impersonal. Hey guys, what's up? It's me, Jackie, and I'm out and about and I'm just rounding out, trying to get my groceries and stuff like that. But on my way to getting groceries right now, I got five houses that I'm about to drive by. I hope they don't think I'm stalking them. Anyway, check me out later because I have a 5 p.m. live where I'll go into details about my findings about these five houses that I'm going to go see. And we're done. So that's Instagram. <laughs> because people's attention span on Instagram is much, much shorter. You know, they're scrolling and they're, it's, it's very um, image specific. So when they have a video pop up, which is like a 60 second or less video, it's great. And then you have Instagram TV, which is a new thing that they rolled out in 2019, which gives you up to 10 minutes. But the caveat, it's vertical versus horizontal. <laughs> so people like, got thrown off by that because all the other platforms, the, the video um, ratio, right? The dimensions were horizontal versus vertical, but Instagram said they, you know, it was going to do its own thing. So you were like, oh, okay, well, you know, I'll follow suit. But it's a really, really great way to get exposure on that as well too. And another place that I love um, is uh, YouTube. So I actually get a lot of new coaching clients and um, new mentees from YouTube because YouTube is kind of like, um, a matter of fact, YouTube is owned by Google, <laughs> right? It's owned by Google. So if you're ever on Google and you're asking Google a whole bunch of questions, that's the one, that's the, the main like um, search engine, right? Is, is Google. So Google's um, other platform that it owns under the corporate entity is YouTube, all right? And if you didn't know that, now you, you should. <laughs> so YouTube is the second search engine platform, but it's just with video. So when people are looking for like websites or they're looking for resources for information, they do that on Gmail. But if they're looking, um, not Gmail, they do that on Google. But if you're looking for like how to and they want to actually watch somebody do something that you want to learn how to do, I call it YouTube University. So if you're ever, you know, interested in creating that space where you can actually teach people about something. And if I was a licensed professional, what I would be teaching sellers is like how to prepare their home. Maybe you make a channel that says how to prepare your home for the maximum market value. I don't know. You start talking about just little things, what cabinets look like. Um, maybe you go to Home Depot and do a, um, a FaceTime or some kind of live video as you go through the Home Depot aisle and you show that it's only 99 cents for the damn poles. You know what I'm saying? Like, I need you to change that 1970, you know, mermaid pole that you got on them cabinet doors. Like, it's not okay, you know? Like, so, <laughs> so you know, these are, the little, these are the things that anybody can do at low cost, doesn't take a, a whole lot of, you know, initial startup investment that you can really position yourself to be unique and dynamic in your space and become a subject matter expert. That's how I feel about it. Wow. So I love that. Jackie, you have provided a plethora of information. This H2H, I'm going to tell you now, I'm going to give you cred, but I'm getting ready to start dropping it today. <laughs> <laughs> how would my audience connect with you? Absolutely. Um, please connect with me on my website, which is uh, www.thejackiejackson.com, the Jackie Jackson, depending on what part of the country you're from, you know, like I'm the only one. <laughs> so <laughs> look, I will tell you to death. So, <laughs> so uh, it's a T H E J A C K I E. Jackson, J-A-C-K-S-O-N.com. And there um, you can follow me. Same. Um, handler on all of my social media so it's um the jackie jackson whether it's on youtube or it is facebook or it is um linkedin or instagram you can follow me on any one of those social media platforms and uh, my handler is the same across all of them across all platforms now if we were on LinkedIn, it would have to be the Jackie Jackson. But <laughs> every place else, it is the Jackie Jackson. Look, I listen to some of my video recordings. I'm like, the, and then the, 
And I'm like, yeah, Marky, you the the queen. So no, 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 I 100% understand. Jackie, I 100% appreciate you. You have actually lifted my spirits today. So thank you so much. We've been in the house, I have now, exactly three weeks today. And so thank you for coming in like a ray of sunshine to brighten my afternoon. Thank you. Thank you so much as well, Marky. I, when I saw the invitation, I was like, oh my gosh, it's Marky, oh my word. So I was definitely excited and I just wanted to be able to contribute and share valuable information, not only to you, but your supporters and your listeners. And I'm just really grateful for the opportunity to be on your show. And I'm just really thankful for you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. I want you to go to www.bjackiejackson.com dot com and connect as you can tell she is a plethora of information we'll see you guys soon